Um, could you please start by saying your name and what you do? Um, I'm Matilda Templey and I'm a photographer. Mm -hmm. At the London School I studied um, the control of infectious diseases and I worked for a while after I finished studying, I was doing a master's there and I worked in the field for a bit and I thought that I wanted to do something where my life was very much my own and I um, thought I'd always liked photography and before I'd never thought it was could be a very valid career and then I thought maybe I'll just give it a go and I was spoiled and young and I, and I wanted my time to be my own. Um, I'd always been interested in photography and I think that I, when I was working out in Uganda I had a few, a few interesting moments and I, and I was always thinking back to what I actually really wanted to do. I knew that I wasn't wanting to be working in, in the disease field for ever and I was really racking my brains as to what were, what was I was inspired to do and it's quite a hard thing when you're working and you've studied for something and you're like I know I want to do something that's not this and I think I had always enjoyed photography and so I decided to move back to the UK call myself a photographer and learn as I was going um, I'm just about to go to Ghana and do a project on leprosy so I always thought when I started out photography, I always thought it was going to be photography related to the health world. So I would be using it to tell stories. And actually, as it turned out, I ended up in London working as a fashion photographer and work, trying to work out how I could get back to doing those documentary stories. I didn't realise you do what stories people want to hear often and you have to have a, build your audience before you can tell the stories that you want to tell. And so... I've, I've worked my way into a circle and now I'm going back into doing some photography to tell stories of diseases or disease preventions and that was my initial inspiration I think probably for being a photographer apart from not knowing what else I was going to do. Um, I, when I moved back to London I was, I was working and I was taking whatever jobs I could as a photographer, as a documentary photographer it's a, it's a difficult life because you're, it, there's not very much money in it and it's a very hard thing to do from London. With fashion photography in London it's very much under your control and often it's quite studio based and I found that I, I just found myself quite studio based at the beginning and it was a really wonderful place to learn so it meant that I had the opportunity to learn about lighting techniques and to ex experiment because fashion photography is just experimenting mostly. And so actually I did a big I did a lot of grounding in there and then and then I found it easier to get fashion work than to do documentary stuff. So it just it just happened that way it wasn't by design. And my influences would say I would say I have people that very much inspire me with their photography, but I wouldn't say my photography looks anything like theirs, unfortunately. Um, I, I think Sarah Moon's one of the most wonderful fashion photographers, and Avedon, and, uh, and then my favourite documentary photographer, that I can never pronounce his name, is Joseph uh, Kaldeka. I think as a photographer you always have to be working on personal projects because it's how you learn and develop, and so... I've just done a book called Omo Change in the Valley and it was my first ever project as a photographer and it's my most recent book so it's been a it's been a, a long term project and that's on on it's basically on rights in Ethiopia. So um and then I've obviously done the Somerset Floods which has been which was I just fell into also because it was this barn was actually underwater for 62 days and um, my grandfather's house was one of the first to flood so it's a very personal project and one of the reasons I'm in Somerset now I think probably because I, I fell in love with the area all over again and um, my next book is on old strippers really old ones in their 90s 
So it's, um, yeah, varied. Personal projects are very varied. Um, I think it's just something, the things that you're interested in, it's like uh, if I'm doing an editorial story, then it will be something that I find fascinating and then I'll photograph it and I'm hoping that other people find it fascinating. Um, sometimes they don't, sometimes they don't get it at all, but uh, it's, it's just my own interest or the floods was because it was a, it was a real historical connection to me and my family and obviously from growing up here and um, then the, the project in Ethiopia because I used to work and out in that area so yeah I'm always looking for, for interesting topics. I didn't set out to photograph put the photographs of the floods into a book. I started photographing them because I was speaking to people in the village and saying I was actually away at the time and they were saying you know nothing's been done about it nothing's in the news. I was seeing pictures of my grandfather's house and I thought so I, I just started out to do a set of pictures to send it to the news agencies to to try and get them to open you know start pumping and, and stop this area being flooded this particular village and um, and I was sending it to the agencies, and the agencies said, we're not even going to open the pictures. They didn't even open the pictures. And they said, we're not interested. Um, we reported that Somerset was flooded last week, and it was, you know, that initial report of the village is flooded. And um, it's old news, and we were saying, look, it's really not old news. It's flooded to a level that's completely unprecedented. And so um, I ended up sending it directly to some of the newspapers who ended up running it and then they were asking me for more so I, I continued photographing all through that period and then a publisher approached me and said will you do a book about the floods and I said I asked around and everyone in the community said yeah, that would be great and then it turned out the publisher wanted to do it in a different way and by which point I'd already said to everyone I was doing a book and so I thought I'd better do one and what's really important about the book is not necessarily the pictures, but it's the stories. And all the pictures are captioned by people in the community that were affected. So it's, 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 a, it's history and it's told by the people in the community because during the floods, so much misinformation was going out. The Environment Agency was saying one thing, their facts didn't tally with what they were saying. And there was a lot of blame games. And so it was really important to catch the, the essence of what was going on by the people in the community and so it's a historical record for what actually happened because as you know from being around here what happened and what the press was saying was happening at the beginning was two very different stories. What makes me passionate about my community? I think that it's, uh, I think growing up in this area, it's incredibly beautiful. It's, uh, Somerset, people are always slightly anarchic. I feel wherever I travel anywhere in the world and you meet someone and they become a good friend and if you n meet another person from the UK and they, they become a good friend and then you find out they come from, come from the West Country invariably. And um, yeah, I think the spirit of the place because I've had all my formative years here and because I've traveled a lot for work and various various jobs and I've always come back to Somerset and thought that I've never quite found something that matches here. Um, as an inspi aspiring photographer I think it is you have to just be motivated and it's really hard it's an incredibly competitive industry and you just have to keep working on your personal projects and as long as you love your personal projects then it'll be a pleasure to do them and then you push them out there. Um, it's still advice I'm trying to always take myself because it's, it's not always easy but it is just keep working on your personal projects because you won't get commissioned to do showcase projects generally. You, you do your personal projects and you get your commissions off the back of that but you always have to be developing yourself as a photographer. Would I have done anything differently in my career? So much differently. Um, Yes, a huge amount, but uh, that's the benefit of hindsight. I, I, don't, I don't regret how I've done it, but uh, I think as a 
photographer starting out, I was older because I'd already done, I'd already been working and I'd done my education and all of that stuff. So I was really impatient and I started out as a photographer straight away not knowing anything about photography and my photos were total crap. But um, I would have benefited hugely. I would have learned what it took me five or six years to learn. I would have learned in a year if I'd gone and assisted somebody. Um, so, yeah, working with other people on the job is probably the best advice that um, I would give. Um, I, I didn't do it, but it, I went the long way around. Um, I'm about to start doing some disease work as a photographer, which will be storytelling, um, which I'm looking forward to. And um, then I'm working on a few documentary projects and I'm working on a project doing, it's, it's also back to one of the projects I started out with and it's looking at kind of contemporary British circus performers. So there's a whole lot. I'm just uh, waiting to see which one gains traction fastest. Do you see yourself as an artist rather than just a... No, I definitely do not see myself as an artist. I, 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 I think I'm a photographer and I, I, I know people will disagree with me, but I, I don't feel that as a documentary photographer, I don't feel documentary photography is art, it's documentary. And um, like, any, like anything, it's a learnt, learnt thing. Um, so no, I'm a photographer, I'm not an artist. Okay. I think those are all the questions.